Design this collection with the hope that now, more than ever, you'll love the home you're in. There's some available, I like it, yeah. What more can I do? Oh, I'm
Zaina. Can you hear me, Zaina? Zaina? Zaina, can you hear me? Zaina, unmute yourself. I need to hear from you. Hit the mute button on your computer. I need to talk to you. Hello? Zaina. Hello? You weren't, you weren't here on uh, Tuesday, were you? No. Okay. It's, it's good that you are here today. Now, Zaina, I can't, I don't have the time to go over everything I went over on Tuesday. There is a recording that is in the, uh, that's in the course content. If you go all the way down to the bottom, course content, all the way down to the bottom in the uh, uh, modules, you'll find something that says Zoom meetings. If you open that, you can find a link to the, uh, um, to the video for uh, Tuesday. Okay, okay thank Zana? you. It is Zaina, correct? Yes. All right. Good enough. Hi, ladies and la actually, it's ladies so far. How we doing? I'm good. 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 Kaylin, what's your last name? Jones. No, it's got to be something harder than that. Nope, it's just Jones. Sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and Andrew is in. Okay. Actually, Hunter is in. Uh, Aya or Aya. Aya, am I saying Here. it right? Am I saying it right? Yes. And your last name, it begins with a K. I can figure it out. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Anybody have any questions on anything? All right. Something came up in one of the emails. I have no control over the grade book. I hate the grade book for labs. Something came up. Uh, you, are, you are scored a zero until you actually complete the assignment. So your grade looks much poorer than it really is. But if you look over to the right, you can get a sense of how many points you need to get an A, B, C, or D. I don't know how it works. It's a big secret that Dr. Musgrave keeps. So I'm, a, I'm sorry about that, but it's gonna look like you have a bad grade when you don't really, okay? Okay. Hi, Hunter, how you doing? Doing well, thanks for remembering my name. Hey. I have this little cheat sheet here. Yeah, I've been trying to um, just get a head start on everything. Last night I went into the lab um, after watching the videos and stuff. But, you know, I was going to say is what's up with that first question on the test? It says it's like a space for you to do things. Uh, I, how do you, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so like if you do the first lab report in the, the first, actual sorry, time out, the first lab report being chem and physical properties. Yeah. Uh, you uh, let me go in there and try and figure out what's going on with it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, everything was okay. Like it, it all made sense. But I was gonna say uh, the very first question, it's like this box and it says your teacher may have you do something that's the that's the first question or is it the last question very first question it'll say don't you know, worry it, about it okay that, okay where all right if all right there are going to be certain experiments where you where i know the experiments are very very easy to do in other words you should get good results and yeah. that's a place that is a place where i can give you extra credit or i can take points away okay Generally speaking, Hunter, because of the fact that uh, uh, we're giving you all the data, that probably won't occur this semester. Okay. I'm sorry. That's what that's for. That's okay. Yeah, I, just, I was just curious. 
Yeah, I I'm, I thought it was at the very end. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I know. The uh, where, when it asked you to define like the series of chemical reactions that happened, I see you're you're already doing your trickster stuff. Not me. Not me. I, I hands off. I did not write these quizzes. I'm responsible right. for other things. Are you talking about the lecture or the lab? I think I'm talking about the lab. Okay. Are you already doing the chem and physical properties? Yeah. Okay. Uh, more power to you. You did the lab report? Yep. And the pre report. Okay. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. The videos are pretty interesting. Yeah, they are. Okay, there's the first question. Yes, that's why in the, if you, okay, I'm not sharing this right now. That is, you're absolutely correct. Hunter, uh, that's part of the reason why I didn't really want to get into it before now. Yes, it's what they did was they asked you to draw conclusions on the chemical reactions, okay? And you haven't had, you haven't been instructed on that yet. So you can't be, it can't be assumed that you know that but yet they asked you the questions. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, I mean, I guess it, it's kind of intuitive though, because if you look at like, if you have a list of what, um, what, you know, compounds or what elements that you're working with, I mean, each question has a, uh, has like the answer or the answers I know. of those. Yeah. I know what so, you're saying. I know what you're saying. And literally Hunter, what's going to happen is next week, I'll give a little bit of a, snapshot on how to do them and I'll lead you through those those particular reactions you just got to it before I had a chance okay uh, it's all good so how'd you do on it um I felt confident but I don't uh you can't uh, I can't see the results yet I think you have to uh, do the grading which is not gonna it's, happen for a while yeah I know I know uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and look at it later on. All right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's okay. And if you, uh, if you want to just throw them in whenever the due date is, I mean, I, I'm, I think I did okay on it. So we'll, we'll see. Okay. Anybody else have any questions while I'm futzing around with this, by the way, Hunter, do you mind other, if you mind, I won't open this. Uh, but if you do mind, I will do, do whatever you want. I, I'm good. You got an eight, you got an 83% on it. Oh, good. So if there was nothing, there might be some things that I have to hand grade. I don't know off the top of my head, but, uh, just, um, you know what I was going to say? There's some questions where, um, like, it's hard to tell, like there's some things like, for instance, um, in the videos, it's kind of hard to tell, like, though they might leave out, uh, let, let's say that the reaction caused like exothermic, um, like an exothermic thing where it would get hot. But um, so I don't know, like some of the videos could be, uh, it's hard to tell exactly, you know, everything on the list, because it, it'll ask you like, which one of these things, you know, happened in this video and there's obvious answers. And then uh, there could be things that are, might not be that obvious. That's what I was saying. Could be a little tricky. I, it is, it is very tricky. Andrew, did, we uh, have, did we have anything else to do besides the uh, quiz one? Nope. No, you have oh, okay. on Sunday, you have to fill out the uh, scavenger hunt, but I believe that's it. There's some funny questions on that. It, wait, you, just wait. What can I tell you? 
Uh, there's somebody in here that I'm not sure belongs in here and I need you to identify yourself. And they're no longer in here. There's somebody that flashed by and it was pixel something. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Andrew, did I sufficiently answer it for you? Hunter, Hunter, I'm sorry. Yes, it sounds, yep, I appreciate it. No, no problem. Uh, I don't want to stay any longer in this. Uh, what are you guys seeing? Hold on one second. Sorry, somebody, somebody just appropriately used my phone number. They said that um, they're going to be late. Crap. Sorry. Now you understand why it's not a good idea to text me. It takes me forever to do that. What? Oh, my phone's dying. Thank you. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Kevin, you look just out. I noticed, Kevin, are those goggles or are those your real glasses? You're muted, Kevin. I could tell because your lips were moving and no sound was coming. All okay. right. All right. Four more minutes, ladies and gentlemen. We got 12 people in here. Any other questions about anything? Oh, I got more people. I just haven't admitted them. Seven people, four people in the waiting room now. Oh, that helps. Now I'm up to 21. Okay. Kevin is here. Mila is here. Why are you guys laughing? I think Katie's here. Katie, is that you? What? Okay. Sorry, Alec, what's your last name? Uh, Root, sir. R-O-O-T. Thank you very much, Alec. Uh, Kevin's here. Oh, this thing is crazy. Hunter's here. Uh, Apple Grace is here. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, I got you. I got. Uh, I knew. I know. I marked you once. I. Uh, there we go. Yep. Chase, Glenn. Okay, Brian Reese. Okay, anybody have anything? Nothing? Elizabeth? Yes? You're not typing, so you have to be typing constantly since Tuesday. You're not answering me, Elizabeth. Sorry, my sound's glitching out really bad right now. You must have been typing since last Tuesday. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of questions to ask. <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. I can't, every time I go to try and enter somebody's name in there, it pops out on me. Omar, you here yet? Lewis. Christina. Hey. Lewis is here, good. Christina, Gaith, 
Terry. Here, sir. Uh, Marie. Marie. Jadania. Fabiana. Here. Thank you. Leandre. Armethia. Nyla. Kaylin. Uh, you, I already got you. Kaylin, you're here, right? I'm here, yeah. Yeah, I heard your kids. Shamira. I don't have kids. <laughs> you don't have kids? I heard them anyway. <laughs> Shamira. Jamira, are you here? Maria. M A R I Y A. Miss Lapo. It's Mariah. I'm sorry, it's what? Mariah. More? Mariah. I, uh, like the wind in uh, Get Your Wagon. Aaron. Here. You're not, obviously, you've never seen the musical, have you, Mariah? It's got a song in it that says they call the wind Mariah. Andrew. Andrew Melick. Katie. Katie, you there? Cash. Hayden. Faith, I think I saw you. Myla, I saw Jennifer. Mm hmm yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Helen? Victoria, I see, and Spencer. Here. Here. Gotcha. All right, I will check. I will check on things later on. Make sure I get everybody in here that's in here, all right? Okay. Where is my screen share? There we go. Ah. There we go, maybe. Why is this not working? Is going on. This is acting absolutely crazy. Okay. This is easy. I can do it this way. Yes. Helen is in here. All right. Cash is here. Uh, Jordania. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Shamira Levine is here. And Andrew is here. Uh, Hayden. Sorry, guys. I'm just taking roll. And as soon as I get that done, as soon as I get this Okay. Professor, I missed your first class, so I want to make sure that I'm showing up on your roster today. Who are you? Rosina Mardani. Okay. Spell your last name, please. M, like Mary, A-R-D-H-A-N-I. Okay. Okay, let's do this again. Sorry, I am trying. I was trying to find you. Did you sign up late? Uh, yes. Okay, spell your last name, please. M like Mary, A like Apple, R like Robert, D like Daniel, H like Henry, A like Apple, N like Nancy, I like India. And your first name, please. Rosina, R-O-Z-I-N-A. Okay. You are Thank now you. officially in here. 
I was Thank also you. gonna say me as well. I wasn't here last class. Who is that? Uh, Andrew? Yeah, Andrew Malik. Gotcha. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, I knew that. I, I did get you in here. Got it. Thank you. Okay, somebody is in here with a strange password. I gotta go chat. I'm sorry, guys. Ever since that uh, that hacker got into the there was a hacker that uh, literally uh, got caught and was brought to trial, and he had his friends hack into the judge's the judge's computer, and porn got on there. So ever since then, I've got to check on this. Somebody is on here. They have what looks to be a a uh, website. It is O A L. NWE1 at live.spcollege.edu. You need to identify yourself. If you don't identify yourself, I have to kick you out. Yes, uh, this is Omar. Omar, thank you. What's your last name, Omar? Gotcha. Uh, I'm gotcha. Okay. Sorry, I just have to do that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with the when little school. School isn't a place you have to be. Why not go to school? Uh, it's it's pretty late. Here we have a pine cone. And then... Wait, don't touch Is that better? Oh, yeah. Excuse me, sir. And now... One second. Ace. Yes, okay. Curtis. Uh, I didn't hear my name called. Did you Did you uh, mark me present? Uh, yeah, I got you, Curtis. Uh, what happened is I had a whole bunch of people in the waiting room. And the reason I called the names was because it was jumping around on me. When you're in the waiting list, you're solid. So I got everybody. I got, got you, it. Curtis. Thank you. SAP Science presents the elements of the periodic table. There's hydrogen and helium, then lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon everywhere, nitrogen all through the air, with oxygen so you can breathe, and fluorine for your pretty teeth, neon to light up the sign, sodium for salty times, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, then sulfur, chlorine, then argon, potassium, and calcium so you'll grow strong, scandium, titanium, vanadium, and chromium, and manganese. This is the periodic table, no gas is stable. Allergens and alkali react aggressively. Each period will see new outer shells while electrons are added, moving to the right. Iron is the 26th in cobalt, nickel coins you get, copper, zinc, and gallium, germanium, and arsenic. Selenium and bromine film will krypton help light up your room, rubidium and strontium, then yttrium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silverware, then cadmium and indium, tin cans, antimony, then tellurium, and iodine, and xenon, and then cesium, and Barium is 56, and this is where the table splits, where lanthanides have just begun. Lanthanum, cerium, and praseodymium. Neodymium's next to promethium, then 62. Samarium, europium, gadolinium, and terbium, dysprosium, holmium, erbium, thulium, ytterbium, lutetium. Hafnium, tantalum, tungsten, then we're on to rhenium, osmium, and iridium, platinum, gold, to make you rich till you grow old, mercury, to tell you when it's really cold, thallium, and lead that is meant for your tummy, polonium, astatine would not be yummy, radon, francium will last a little time, radium, then actinize at 89, this is the Periodic table, noble gas is stable, halogens and alkali react aggressively. Each period will see new outer shells will be like chons are to the right. Actinium, thorium, protactinium, uranium, neptunium, plutonium, americium, curium, berkelium, californium, isinium, fermium, and olivium, nobelium, laurentium, rutherfordium, wm, sporium, borium, hesium, nymetnerium, darksidium, rocanium, cupperdicium, nihonium, flerovium, moscovium, liberborium, tendesine, and and then we're done. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you My wife walked down the aisle to that. <laughs> what can I tell you?
It's just a cute little thing. Actually, if you listen to the words of the chorus, that actually has a lot of good information in it, but it goes pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. All right, we got to get into a subject. Got to get into a subject. Can every, nope, not this one. No, 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 not yet. No. Uh, yes. Okay, we got to get into a subject that is, it's kind of a hard concept to get. And that is chemical and physical properties and changes. So we're going to get through this. Basically, funny enough, the objectives for this are learning what physical properties are, learning what chemical properties are. You're also going to do, learn what physical changes are and how matter can change from one state to another. Then you're going to go and learn about chemical changes, which basically are going to tell you how matter turns into something else. So we got to start with definitions. That's where basis of everything. And a property is basically a trait that something has. It's a characteristic, an attribute. So basically, if you have a physical property, a physical property is nothing more than something that makes that substance that substance. Uh, it is, sorry, I'm looking, somebody just got in a little late. I just clicked them on, good. So if you have a substance, there are things about that substance which makes it that substance. Copper has kind of a brownish color. Uh, if we have a substance like ammonia, ammonia, a very pungent odor. If we have something like lemon, a lemon tastes really, really sour. These are properties that the individual substance has. A chemical property, on the other hand, is the ability that that substance has to turn into something else. Physical is an attribute or quality of the substance. Chemical property is the ability to turn into something else. So basically, when we have a physical property, we can measure something without changing the composition of the matter. We can look at something, we can determine what its traits are. When we do that, we are not changing it. Some of the properties, how does it smell? What color is it? What's its volume? What's its physical state? Does it dissolve in another substance? What's its density? And what are the melting and boiling point of it? Now, because the physical properties give, give the traits of the substance, they can be used to identify that substance. Believe me, if you've ever smelled ammonia, you will know ammonia from then on. If you've ever had your hair dyed, then you know what that smell is, that horrible odor. Uh, if you know the density of a substance is 8.93, you can literally look up on a chart, a chart of densities, and if you look that up, you'll find copper has a density of 8.93. So we can use physical properties to help identify what the substance is. So how do we detect them? What do you think you use to detect an odor? Senses. Ah, your senses. You see, hear, touch, smell, and not so much taste in chemistry, but we do to taste. If I were to tell you acids are so sour 
and you know that when you, that sensation you get when you bite into a lemon, what conclusion can you derive about a lemon? Christina, you out there? Zaina. Zaina. Yes. Okay. I'm telling you, acids taste sour. Have you ever bitten into a lemon, Zaina? Yes. What's it taste like? Sour. So what conclusion can you derive about a lemon? That it's sour. <laughs> it's sour. What else is sour, Zaina? I can, I can answer it. Go ahead, Hunter. The conclusion would be that it, the lemon is acidic. That it contains something that's acidic, yes. Absolutely. Did you see that, Zaina? Quick question? Yeah. Answer. I, I've got an answer. Who's asking the question? Yeah. Uh, also, I don't know if uh, everybody knows about this, but the citric acid that's made out of lemon. Yes. It's, it's uh, basically any citrus fruit has citric acid in it, yes. Oh, okay. And they also have ascorbic acid. There's several acids that are involved in citrus fruits. But the bottom line, what I'm trying to tell you is we're going to detect physical properties by using our senses. On the other hand, if I have a chemical property, we're talking about how does that chemical react? It's its ability to form new substances. If we leave steel out in the open in Florida, it's going to rust. It goes from iron to iron oxide. If you eat food, the food after you eat it gets turned around in the stomach. Acids go in, the, in and start to dissolve the food. It changes the food. So we have pasta, which has a big, long chain of individual sugars, it breaks the sugars along the individual lines. So we can actually use that sugar to, for energy. So in a chemical property, it's the ability to react. Now you got to understand my semantics here. When I'm talking a chemical property, has anything happened yet? No. So you got to read the question real carefully. If it has the ability to do something, if it can do something, if it will, will turn into something, that's a future event. That's a property. If it's already occurred, that is a change. Do you, are you understanding the semantic difference between the two? Yes. So when we're dealing with chemical properties, we're dealing with a whole new substance that gets created. Properties involve the ability. It's I have a quick question, I'm sorry. You may have answered this last week. Um, do we have access to these PowerPoints? Yes. Okay, thank you. You, Mila, you did not have access to it before this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, my schedule is such that I literally teach, uh, I teach this class lab on end lab at like 830 or so. Yeah, I teach sure. all day Wednesday. And so therefore I can't get to the recordings. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that I can't focus really with my kids. So, uh, yes, it is. It is Mila. It is, uh, recorded. Thank you. All right. If, it, if a chemical property involves changing it to another substance, are the physical properties probably going to change? You have one substance that starts off with certain physical properties. You change that substance. Isn't it probable that the properties, the physical properties are going to change as well? So this is how you observe if a chemical change has occurred. If the property, physical properties change, 
then you probably have got a chemical reaction. You probably have a chemical change going on. Now, if we're dealing with physical changes, remember, physical, we're not changing the substance. So what we do is we alter the form of it. We change it. We take a piece of paper. Is it still paper? Yes. I can yes. burn both of them. If I burn both of them, I'll make the same compounds. It's still flat. It's still white. I haven't changed it. All I've done, I'm excuse me, I haven't chemically changed it. All I've done is physically change it. I could take it. Now, is it in a different physical form? Yes. Yeah. I can take it. I can make a nice. Can you do origami? In a manner of speaking, this is my, <laughs> this is as origami as I get. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> now, I have taken that flat sheet of paper and I have made an airplane. Have I changed the form of it? Have I changed it from being paper? No. Therefore, mm -hmm. it is a physical change. Now, if I take that paper and I write on it, have I changed the paper? I've changed it. There's no writing on it where there was no writing before. So I, phys I have physically changed it, but it's still paper. It still has all the properties that paper does. Another thing you can do to physically change it, if you change the state of matter, if you take water, boil it up so it gets into steam. Then at the very top of this, well, let me ask you a question. Terry, you out there, Terry? Hi, Terry. Terry, you need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, Terry, you boil water. Have you ever boiled water with the lid on the pan? Yes, sir. Have you taken the lid off and looked at the underside of the lid? Yes. Isn't that water? Yep. So have you changed the water by evaporating it, by making it into a gas? Have you changed it from being water? No. It's the same substance. If you change the state, if you take that water, make it into ice, it's still got two H's and one O for every molecule. You haven't changed it. Going from solid to liquid to gas does not change it into something else. It is a physical change. Uh, thank you, Terry. No problem. Marie. Marie, you out there? Mr. Dania. Yes. Hi, Marie. Hi. Is, it, is Judania your first name? Yes. It's what you want to be called. I'm sorry. I will. It's okay. It's okay. I will circle it so that the dummy doesn't do it again. Uh, Judania, you have a chemical that's yellow crystals. Okay, Judania? Okay. You take those yellow crystals and you put them in water. Water's clear. As you put those yellow crystals in the water, okay. you change the color of the water to yellow. Yes. Have you changed the substance? If I evaporate all the water away, am I still going to get yellow crystals back? If you do what? Excuse me? If I evaporate all the water away again, mm -hmm. am I going to end up with yellow crystals again? Yes. So have I changed them? No. So dissolving anything is a physical change. 
Okay. So I've already done this slide. Now, on the other hand, when I have chemical changes, I get a new substance. The matter changes into a different kind of matter. And what I am observing is the first type of matter, the first substance, has its own set of physical properties. When it changes into something else, that new substance has its own set of physical properties. And they may be different. If they are different, then that's evidence of a chemical change. Some examples, if you take logs, do logs look the same after you burn them as when they did when you started? No. Consistently, they're, they're less dense. They are black as opposed to maybe brown or whitish. They're different. <laughs> it has changed. We have changed the log itself into carbon dioxide and water. When a car rusts, cars, steel, bright shiny, when you rust, bright shiny and it's a fairly dense substance, rust, very, very flaky, brownish color, properties are different. It's an example of the properties changing, therefore it must be a chemical change. <laughs> So we can tell a chemical change has happened. If the substance changes, the physical properties are going to change. Physical change is a change in the size, shape, state, or what the stuff looks like. Chemical change, we've got matter, it changes into a new kind of matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you see a change in if you see a change in color, then you probably have a chemical change. If you have the disappearance of a solid, the property was it didn't dissolve in the liquid before. You've done something to it, now it dissolves. Different physical property, chemical change. Or the reverse of that. It was dissolved before, now it's not dissolved. Physical, proper, or physical property change, we have a chemical change. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So it says if you have a disappearance of a solid, I thought it didn't matter if like, I thought that would it's be a physical change. It's from the PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. All right, can I explain? Yeah. Thank you, Faith. Chase. All right, if, if what you're doing is just taking the substance and dissolving it, okay? And if after you evaporate this, the uh, liquid away, you end up with that same crystals, can you see you haven't changed it, Chase? What do you mean? All right, you take salt. You take salt, right? Yeah. You put salt in water. Yeah. You stir it around, you get that nice clear solution again. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take that solution and you heat it up, evaporate all the water away, are you left with white crystals again? No. Yes. Oh, you are? Yes, you are. Because it hasn't changed, okay? On the other hand, if you take zinc, a white shiny metal, and you put it in hydrochloric acid, what happens is the zinc doesn't dissolve in water. So you had, you had a substance that didn't dissolve in water before. Now it's reacted with the hydrochloric acid what it's made has a physical property that it does dissolve in water. 
That so, is Professor a Charlie chemical Mullane. change. Uh, guys, when when you come in late, please don't don't announce it. Just just I, I've got you, Gaith. Just don't announce it. Uh, it kind of breaks up the rhythm. All right. Sorry. No, no problem. Chase, did you understand what I just the example I just gave you? Yeah. All right. Now that zinc differs from dissolving because zinc itself won't dissolve in solution. But if you react it with something, it creates a chemical that does. So that's okay. why that's why seeing something disappear is can be a chemical change. So pretty much a chemical change, it just requires it to kind of correspond with and attach to both solutions, kind of. Yes and no. Chase. It sounds like you. Go oh, ahead. I was about to say, it sounds like you can't get, if it's a chemical change, to me, it sounds like you can't get that physical form back. So, like with water, you can get uh, just liquid, gas, and then solid. But if you're like melting something or I don't know, like baking a cake, you can't get that raw egg back after you've baked it. Does that make sense, Chase? Yeah. Others of you that are out there, what Victoria just said makes perfect sense. If you can't get the original substance back, it's a chemical change. But we don't always need heat in order for a chemical reaction. No, right? no. Right, it's just in a, an example of like, like if you're baking a cake, you're not gonna get your sugar or your, um, your eggs back in the raw state that it was in. Unless, Victoria, you chemically react it to get back to that form. Sure. I'm but, not a scientist, though. I have a question. <laughs> Hunter. Can you have a reaction that's neither endothermic or exothermic that's not classified as, as either one of those? I've not, I have not heard of one. Thank you. Sorry, I have not heard of one. Okay, Victoria. Nah, that's too easy. You, you're a smart girl. Oh, let's, ask, let's ask somebody else. Elizabeth, you out there, Elizabeth? Yeah, I'm here. Element of bromine is a dense, dark red, pungent smelling liquid. Is that a physical or a chemical property? That's a physical property. Because all you're doing is describing what it is. You're not saying what it could possibly turn into. Victoria, we'll get you now. Uh -oh. Elemental bromine will react vigorously with elemental sodium to form a white solid. Remember the description of bromine we had before. Now it, we have a white solid. Is that a physical or a chemical property? Chemical? Because you're it's changing color? It's changing color. It's a physical property. And it is a property rather than a it's a property rather than a change because of the semantics here, guys. You Wait, gotta uh, look sorry. at the, you gotta look at your verbs. It Wait. says it will one second, Andrew, okay? Right. It says it will react because it says it will react. It hasn't happened yet. It is a property. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Andrew. No, my bad. I was just saying, I just wanted to clear up. Did you say it was a physical property? No, this this slide. Yeah, this slide. This slide is a chemical because, oh, okay. sorry, sorry. because sorry. it will react. OK, got it. It will react and it will change into a new substance. OK. okay? Yep. Good, Andrew. You're back. <laughs> I have a question regarding that, though. Sorry, Elizabeth. I have a question regarding the previous slide. So where it's changing from the red to white, I understand that that is a chemical uh, chemical change because it is a reaction, but the it's actual- also, also, bromine is liquid. We formed a solid. Okay, never mind. That answers my question. Okay. Uh, Andrew. Andrew has skittered away. Yeah. All right, Andrew. 
oven cleaners. Oven cleaners contain sodium hydroxide, which converts grease oil spatters to a water soluble material that can be washed away. Is that a physical or chemical change or property? Oh. Uh, I think does, it's grease, does grease dissolve in water? Does it dissolve? Does it dissolve? I don't know. I think it does. No, it doesn't. Does it? No, it doesn't. No. But when you put the oven cleaner on the grease, it does dissolve. Okay. Have we had a change of property, Andrew? Yes. So if it's a change in the property, then do we have a chemical or a physical change? It's chemical. Chemical change. Okay, makes sense? Yeah. Omar, you there, Omar? Yes, I am. A rubber band stretches when you pull on it. Has it happened yet, Omar? Uh, it's a physical change. Has it happened? It did. It stretches when you pull on it. Have you pulled on it yet? No, I haven't. So if you haven't pulled on it, it is a property. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. There's also a property. I'm sorry? I, I thought there's only two things, the chemical and the physical. There are four. Oh, wow. Physical property, physical change, chemical property, chemical change. Okay? Those are your four choices here. Then, Hydrochloric acid has a pungent odor. Let's go to the back here. Brian. Brian. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, Hydrochloric acid has a pungent odor. Is anything no. changing? No. If it's not changing, is it a change or a property? Property. Okay. All right. If, is it making new substance? No, it would be so, physical property. Physical property. That's how you work through these questions, guys. On the other hand, hydrochloric acid will burn a hole in your dreams. Faith, you out there, Faith? Faith? Faith is not there. Alec? No, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. What did you say? Okay. Alec, I'll get you next. Faith, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid will burn a hole in your jeans. Will burn. Has it happened yet? No. So is it a property or a change? A property. Has, it's a property, exactly. And it will burn. OK? Have you ever, do you have, acid, have you seen acid wash jeans? Yes. Do you think that the cotton has been reacted with? Yes. So is this a chemical or a physical? Chemical. Chemical property. Okay. Alec, copper compounds have a blue color. I believe it is a physical property. Physical property. Okay. Now, tough one. Who wants a tough one? Hayden. Hayden, you there? Aya? Yes. Aya. It's I'm basically I'm getting a message saying that you raised your hand. What's going on? I wanted a tough one. <laughs> You wanted the tough one? Good. Yes. Copper metal. What color is copper, Aya? Brown. You, brown. If you see a wire, that's made of copper. It's brown. Yet, I'm going to tell you right now, when the sculptor made the Statue of Liberty, he made it of copper. OK? So originally, the Statue of Liberty was made of copper. What color is it now, Aya? Green. So you just said, I told you it's made of copper, but you said it's green, but copper's brown. What's happened? It had a physical change. Okay. 
Copper is brown, right, Aya? Yes. Is that a okay. chemical change? One second. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to lead her through to that direction. Copper is brown. The Statue of Liberty is green. I know it reacted with water and like the oxygen that made it green. So, so if it, it reacted, it's a chemical change. Uh, who was just trying to answer that? And we have crickets. Hey, Hayden. Hi. Bread turns brown when you put it in a toster. Chemical property because the change like hasn't happened yet. Exactly, absolutely, exactly. Bread is white, toast is kind of brownish. Exactly right. Any questions about this, ladies and gentlemen? Questions? What, what about the question about uh, a pan resting in the sink? Okay. Uh, do you recall what that was? If I believe it was um, a pan rested in the in sink. The sink yeah. If it rusted yeah. in the sink, what do you think it is? I believe it would be chemical, but I'm not sure. It is chemical. Is it a change or is it a property? Has it happened? Uh, if it's happened, it's a it's a change. If it hasn't, it's a property. There we go. About that though, can't you like scrub that off? What's that? Can't you like scrub that off the pan, the rest, and then it's back to normal? Yeah, but but the things that you scrubbed oh. off okay. are still rust, right? Yes. Mila? Hi. Hi. Stop. <laughs> okay. Hi, Mila. Do you understand that? Yes. You, you've actually. You haven't gotten rid of the rust. All you've done is move it. <laughs> All you've done is move it from the pan somewhere else. Okay. I like yes, this. that makes sense. Thank so, you. so it would be a chemical change then if you like burned a hole through your pan or like rust made a hole in it, right? Yes, that, you said it was a chemical okay. change, Victoria? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a question. I'm here. Will we go over conservation of matter? Yes. Okay. That's going to be the last thing we talk about before you get your test. Yeah, I just feel like that's the most fundamental thing because like all of the stuff is still there. Like everything in the universe is still there. It just changes form. Hunter, the reason I do that is I like to talk about conservation of energy and mass at the same time. And that's when I talk about energy. Okay, so we will get to it, but just not yet. All right. Okay. Uh, 10 to one, show all windows. That's not what, I, actually that is what I want. Okay. Unfortunately, the next two slideshows are very boring. I can't do anything more than that, but it's stuff you have to know. I am Sheen screen sharing, right? Yep. Okay, I have no idea why I've got to. Are, are you seeing two slides? Yeah. Yes. You're seeing the next slide. I'm sorry, I, I did something. I don't know what I did. Bye. Okay. So basically, when we're getting into measurement, we're going to deal with the parts of a measurement. You're going to determine the estimated digit. You're going to learn how to read measurement with an estimation. We're going to deal with the metric system and the conversion within the metric system. That's what this PowerPoint is going to deal with. So we have three parts of a measurement. The one is the actual number. The actual number is kind of more, more than anything else. It's a comparison. Okay. Uh, how do I put that? Paper. Ah. 
I'll give you my checkbook, okay? This side is one third of this side. So if I measure this and this turns out to be three inches, this is gonna turn out to be nine inches. That's what I mean by it's a comparative, comparative feature. But you also need to have a unit on it because we need to know what it is you use to measure that. So we need to have some sort of a label after the number. The unit is gonna tell you what scale you are talking about. Then the third part of a measurement is the part you don't normally see. Sometimes you'll see a number with a unit and then you'll see at the very back end of it, plus or minus. The plus or minus is the error estimate of that number. Basically, it is the range that the number can be within. And we're gonna go and start to explain it. All right, you're at the gas pump. What the gas pump does is it measures out and it equates whatever the price per gallon you're, you're creating it at and the gallonage you're creating. So we have a number. We have a whole number and below it, we have a label, dollars and gallons. What they don't tell you is what the error factor is in there. And we're gonna to get to that in a second. All numbers have that which you absolutely know and that which you estimate with. What you know versus what you estimate. The last digit in any number is the estimated digit if it is not an exact number. That's the only caveat. The last digit in any measurement is estimated, always. So, Terry, have I bothered you yet today? A little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm down for more. Okay. Terry, let's go back. Let's go back a couple slides. Remember, the estimated digit is always going to be the last number to the right. All right. So let's do this quickly. Terry, question number one. What is the estimated digit? Four. Which four? Uh, the, the right one, one or the left the one? one? Uh, the right one. Right one, very good. Uh, cash. Yeah. 12.5 quarts, what's the estimated number? Five. Okay, who wants a tough one, Jennifer? There is no estimated number. Very, very good. In order to get 630 pencils, you had to count them. There are exactly 630 pencils. There's not 629. There's not 631. There are exactly. So in that particular example, there is no estimated number. Good work, Jennifer. Thank so you. if it doesn't have a decimal pretty much, then it's an exact no. number? No. 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 Okay. You get exact numbers by either counting them or by having an exact conversion factor. Okay. For example, there are exactly 12 inches in one foot. That's an exact number. That too is not estimated. Does that make sense? Yes. If you have, or if you're comparing centimeters to inches, there are exactly 2.54 centimeters in one inch. That four is not estimated. It is a real number. Sorry. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now, when you are looking at a measurement, you are always going to have a ability to determine what the smallest line in the measurement is. You're always gonna have two lines 
that are demarcated by numbers. And in between those two lines, you're going to have a bunch of little lines. Am I lying to you about any measurement you've ever done? Is that no. true? Any measurement you've ever done, you've got two lines in which you have numbers that are delineating what those lines represent. And in between those two lines, there are a whole bunch of little hashtags, which are smaller lines. In order to determine the value of that little line, what you have to do is you have to subtract the bigger volume from the bigger number from the smaller number. You subtract that. Then what you do is you count the number of spaces between the two lines that were marked and you divide the subtracted value by the number of spaces. That means that is the value of that little line. Okay, now we know what the value of the little lines are. What happens is if we have two lines that are marked, two little lines that are marked, we know what their value is. But our measurement is halfway between. We have to estimate how far it is. Is it closer to this one? Is it closer to this one? We have to estimate it. And with that estimation, we make one more number just to the right of the last known value. Let me give you an example of what we're talking about here. All right. I look at this ruler and I see that the last lines that are marked are two to three, three to four, four to five. There's a difference of one between where the marked lines are. If I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces. So if I take that four, subtract it from the five, I get one. I divide it by the ten spaces. Each little line is worth 0.1. Now, I can't just call this measurement 5.1. Can't do that. I have to, have to, have to, have to estimate one more digit to the right. I'm looking where that dotted line is coming down. To me, it looks just a shade past the 5.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate that as a hundredth of a centimeter. So what I know is I know that, no, absolutely. I know absolutely that the screw is at least 5.1 centimeters. That's what I know. Now I have to estimate one more digit to the right, and I'm estimating that as a one. So when I make this measurement, the measurement is 5.11. The furthest one to the right is my estimated digit. Questions, guys? A lot of questions. So we don't ever round up or down. We just kind of estimate that last digit? Yes, you do, Terry. Absolutely. The only time, Terry, yep. the, the only time you're going to round up and down is when you get to operations. In other words, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That is the okay. only time you're going to be doing rounding. When you're actually looking at a measurement, you're saying what it is. You're not rounding. That makes sense. Would it matter if I did like 5.12 or 5.1? No, okay. it's how you see it. Okay. My eyes are horrible. Generally speaking, when I get something that's this is if it's this small, what I will do, if it's closer to the smaller one, I'll just call it 5.10. 
if it's closer to the larger one. I will call it 5.20. If it's halfway between, I will call it 5.15. That's how I feel comfortable. You're allowed to do that. But what you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to call it 5.1. You're not allowed to call it 5.2. That's an incorrect measurement. You have to include that estimated digit. A uh, question? I'm here, Omar. So right now, if I see it, it's over five in a little bit, so we're not allowed to call it 5.1, right? No. You oh. have the one. The one is the last known digit. You know that it's at least 5.1. You have to give an estimate with it as well. Have so to. If I would say 5.20, it would be right. It would be, it, all right. From what our discussion is right now, Omar, yes, you would be right, but I could argue that it's closer to 5.10 than 5.20, okay? I see, because I did use, the, I did have the same exactly issue right here. One time at work for measurement, they were like, if it's closer, then you would add. And then if it's lower, you would just. Okay, Omar. If I'm saying it right. Another life lesson, Omar. Uh -huh. You have to realize the, the atmosphere or the area that you're in, okay? Nice. You're at work. You're at work. They pay your salary. They dictate the rules. Okay, Omar? We're in chemistry now. I dictate the rules. That's going to give you an A or an F. You understand? Wherever uh -huh. you are, you have to obey the rules of the establishment. Let's get another one. Uh, Katie, you were there, Katie. Rosina. Rosina. Yes, Professor. Okay, we're going to do the whole thing. You scared? Yes. Don't worry. I've got a net. I've got a net right below you. Even if you fall, you're not going to hurt yourself. Thank you. Okay. What are the two numbers that are labeled? Uh, Fifty and sixty. What's the difference between the two? Ten. You did that without a calculator. <laughs> okay. Now, Rosina. Count with me, how many spaces? One, two, you're not counting with me. One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, eight, nine, ten, up to 60. 10 up to 60. So in order to determine the value of the smallest line, you've got 10 divided by what number? Um, Remember, it was the difference divided by the number of spaces. So it would be one divided by 10. No. Nope. The difference here is 10. 60 minus 50 is 10 mm -hmm. divided by 10 spaces. Okay. So it 10 would be 10 by divided 10. by 60. No. No. We're talking the distance between here and here. Divided okay, Rosina? So I'm lost then. <laughs> All right. In order to determine the value of the smallest line, you take the difference of the marked lines, okay? The difference between 60 and 50 is 10, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And you divide it by the number of spaces, which you said was 10. 10, yeah. 10 divided by 10 is what? One. So each line is one. And if you count them up, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59. Amazingly enough, they're all equally measured, okay? Yes. All right, now. Okay, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna word this question. What do you know about the volume? By the way, the volume you're reading from right there. So I know that it is at least, you know, it is the volume, at least how many milliliters? 
at least 52. 52, okay, we have 52. Now you have to estimate. It's right there, not quite to 53, but a little further away from 52. Yeah. What are you estimating that as? So I would say it's 52.9. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Anybody having questions about this? But you have to make it um, like 52.9, like one, like that extra? No, 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 no. You can't, Mila, you can't go more than one estimated unit. Okay. 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 The, known, the known value is 52. You can estimate it one more decimal place to the right. You cannot go two more decimal places to the right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. They're wild. No, no. Bedtime. <laughs> you're entertaining me. All right. Who haven't I picked on yet? Spencer, you there? Yeah. Does this have an estimated digit? Uh, no. Or, yeah. I don't or know. no, or yeah, or no. <laughs> are you just, are you going to keep on doing this um, until I tell you what the right answer is? <laughs> Estimate, no, I don't think it does. Guys, it doesn't matter whether you're reading this in lights. The last digit to the right is always, <laughs> always, an estimated digit. It's just that the balance itself did the estimating for you. So Spencer, when we're dealing with this number, the four is an estimated digit, always. The last number to the right in any measurement will always be estimated. Okay. Uh, asking lots of questions. Asking lots of questions. Kayla, Kaylin, are you there, Kaylin? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Kaylin. Now, you see this line? See this line? You see where the arrow is? Your cursor? My cursor, yes. Yes. All right. This line is marked 41. This line is marked 40. What's the difference between the two of those? Between 40 and 41 is one. Are you sure you want to check in on your calculator? No, okay. <laughs> I think All I'm right. pretty confident. All right. Now, how many spaces? One. One. I, yes. Spaces by space. Spa this is space between this line and this one. Oh, That's 40 and 41. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, five. Five, 41 is down here. 40 is up here. You got another five spaces to go. 10 then, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. A hard time uh, Seeing it? Yeah. Look. All right, one, two, third space, fourth space, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10. Do you see those 10 spaces? We can't see your curse. I can't yeah. see it oh. on the PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, it's not moving. I'm sorry? Yeah, like uh, Professor, your cursor is moving. It's like frozen. I... The 41 line is underneath the 41, though, is what yes. he's trying to do. Oh, OK, oh, okay. then 10. This one, yes, this one, the 41, this is the line. For the 41, are you seeing the cursor now? No. No. I'm sorry, I don't know. The, the line, the line below the 41 is the 41 line. The line okay. below the 40 is the 40 line. Gotcha. And yes. Yes. I'm Kay following. Yes, Kaylin. If you count the spaces, there will be 10. Okay. <laughs> so the difference between the two numbers is how many? 10. No. The difference what? between the numbers. Oh, oh one. one. <laughs> How many spaces? 10. So what's each little line worth? 0. 0.1. 0. 0.1. So have I gotten beyond the first line past the 40? Are we looking at 
yeah, where it like one more. dips deepest? Yes, right here, right? Uh, uh, yes, we've gone past the 40. Gone past the 40. Are we at the 41 or 40.1 yet? No. So we're at 40.0. How far is it? Estimate how far it is. Three. Closest. What? Three. 40.03. Uh, 40.03. You knew it was at least 40.0. You estimated the 40.03. Does that make sense to you guys? I'm confused. Uh, that's making sense. Okay, who's confused? Shamira? Yeah. Okay, Shamira. Are you seeing? Are you seeing? All right, Shamira, do you understand mm -hmm. how we got the value of the smallest line? No. Okay. The difference, the difference between where the 41 is and the 40, those two numbers. You find two numbers on your measurement scale, okay? Find two numbers. In this case, we have a 41 that has a line. We have a 40 that has a line. You're gonna okay. subtract those two numbers. 41 okay. minus 40 is one, right, Shamira? Yes. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna count the spaces between the, the number 40, of 41. spaces between the 40 and the 41. Okay. If you count that, you have 10 spaces. Okay. So in order to determine how much the little line is worth, you take the numbers and you subtract them. 41 minus 40 is one. Mm -hmm. You then divide it by the number of spaces. In this mm -hmm. case, there were 10 spaces. So the ten, one divided by 10, each little line is worth 0.1. Mm -hmm. You got that, Shamira? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, because the scale is going down, we have to read it going down. And if I look at this, I can see that I'm past 40.0. I am not to 40.1. Do you see that, Shamira? Yes. The major line, the major line that's here right under the 40 is 40.0. 40. Okay. The okay. next little line below that is 40.1. Okay. So I'm beyond the 40. I'm beyond the 40.0. I am not to the 40.1. So I have to record that for what I know that value is 40.0. Okay. Now I just have to estimate how far it is between the major line and the first one. And okay. I would say that's about halfway. So if it's about halfway, what I know for the measurement is 40.0. If it's halfway between 40.0 and 40.1, I have to record that as 40.05. Okay. Make sense, Samira? Yes, thank you. No problem. Okay, guys, I now have 10 minutes to get through the metric system. Okay, got 10 minutes to get through this metric system. Uh, real quick, Andrew Weaver. Andrew. Andrew Weaver. Andrew, if you are hearing me, you're in my lab class. I will extend another invitation at 715. This is not the class you need to be in, Andrew. Okay? All right. God bless Jimmy Carter. Anybody know who Jimmy Carter is? Yes, sir. Love the man. Horrible president. One of the worst presidents we've ever had. An absolutely horrible man. Our absolutely horrible president, absolutely phenomenal man. Hey, didn't he get the most things passed? Uh, that's because he had a Democratic Congress to work with right after Watergate. But 
that being as it is, Jimmy Carter tried, tried his darndest to get the American public to accept the metric system. He did everything he could. How do you buy hamburger now, guys? Do you buy it in kilograms or pounds? Pounds. Pounds. How successful was he? He was not. All right. The thing is, the metric system makes so much more sense than the English system of measurement. So much more sense because everything is based on a scale of 10. Uh, basically, this is a slide just showing you what the units of the, the, uh, of the standard unit for these individual things are. You don't have to memorize it. And basically, originally what they did to get a meter was they took the distance between the North Pole and the equator, kept on dividing it by half until they got a reasonable distance. That's subsequently been changed by the actual definition of a meter is the distance traveled by light in a vacuum at one over 300 or 300 million. I'm going through these quickly, guys. What are the chances I'm going to ask you anything on a test on them? Not really much. Volume is the amount of 3D space occupied by a substance. They came up with the milliliter by determining uh, what the volume of one gram of water was. Key conversion factor. If you didn't know it before, you know it now. One milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. And you can convert them. If you have a liter, you have a thousand milliliters. If you have one one thousandth of a liter, you have one milliliter. We're going to get into that in a second. Uh, measurement of mass is a kilogram, which is 2.2046 pounds. Again, this is stuff that you're not going to have to really memorize. What I do want you to know, I want you to memorize, King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk. Each of the first letters stands for something. King stands for kilo. It's king, so it's the largest. Henry stands for hecta. Died stands for deca. We started doing this with meters, so the Monday stands for meter, the original measurement. Drinking desi, chocolate centi, milk milli. The things to the right here are the prefixes that are applied to the normal measurement. Kilo, hecta, deca are larger than the original measurement. If I had, instead of a meter there, I had a liter, I would be talking about a kiloliter, a decaliter. If I'm dealing with the measurement, it's kilom, kil, kilometer or decameter. If I'm dealing with a gram, it's kilogram or decagram. That's how this works. These are only prefixes to distinguish one measurement from another. So how do you convert from one to the other? Think about a staircase with seven steps. Kilo is the largest. Next step down, label hecta, deca. The actual label, either gram, liter, or meter. Then you get down deci, centi, milli. If you have a kilo and you are asking how many of the smaller measurements you have, each step you go down. If you're going down, each step you multiply by 10. So if you ask how many centimeters there are in a decameter, okay, the how many applies 
implies that that's what you're trying to get. Inner implies that's what you already have. So how many centis in a deca? Count the steps. One step times 10 once. Second step times 10 a second time. 10 times 10 is 100. Next step down times 10 again. 100 times 10, 1,000. A, a, a there are 1,000 centis in any deca. If we are going in the other direction, you're dividing by 10 for each step. So if I ask you how many kilograms are in one decigram, I got to count the steps. First step, divide by 10, 0.1. Second step, divide by 10 again, 0.01. Third step, divide by 10 again, 0.001. Next step, divide by 10 again, 0. 0.00001. Does this make sense to you guys? Yep. Yes. Be good with this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to flash the next screen and go back to here. Uh, real quick. How many milliliters are there in a liter? How many? Rosina, did you have a question? No, I just said I, no, 1, I know it's a quarter. I know it's a quarter till. I'm just going to do a couple examples, then I'm going to leave. How many liter? Uh, how many liters are in a milli? Liters? I don't know it. That's because of how many. The millis, I do know. I count how many steps. Divide by 0 0.1 for 0 0.1. Divide by 0 0.1 again, 0 0.01. Divide by 0 0.1 again, 0 0.001. There are 0 0.001 milliliters, uh, there are 0 0.001 liters in every milliliter. If I ask how many decameters there are in a hectometer, In this case, how many decas? I have a hecta. How many decas are it? I'm multiplying down one step. I am multiplying by 10. OK, guys, this is where I'll begin on next Tuesday. Real quick, looking to see. Mariah. Is Mariah in here? Yes. Okay. That's Miss Miss Lepo, right? Yep. Yes. I gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah. Katie, is Katie in here? I think she emailed me that she wasn't going to be here. Okay. That's it. That's all I got, guys. Um, okay. for your lab, that you're going to start that at seven. Seven fifteen. Okay, perfect, because I'm going to put them to bed. Remember, remember, you do not use any pillows to put over their heads to put them to bed, Mayla. <laughs> My oh, are you going to send us another email, right? Yes. Yes, I am. Hey, I got a question. There's, uh, there's labs on Tuesday and there's labs on Thursday, right? They're not like, a lab isn't on, uh, isn't on two days, it's only on one day, right? Correct. Yes. Right. Yes, Hunter. Uh, basically, I happen to have two introductory labs on Tuesday and Thursday after class, but they're individual. You only have to show up for Tuesday. Okay. Um, sounds good. Okay. Those of you, I, got I know I saw something. I, just wait a second. I need to make an announcement. I believe Ms. Weaver, I saw, and I saw somebody else. I saw, An I'm sorry, not Ms. Weaver. I saw Andrew Weaver and Sarah Sullivan. Please open your mics now. Talk to hey. me. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi. I basically I screwed up. What I did was I sent the invitation to your lab early. Okay? 
I am going to send another invitation in about a half an hour. Okay. okay? So all you're gonna, just wait for it. It'll be there around 7.15. All right, thank you. Uh, Andrew, you got that? Andrew? I think he pieced. Yeah, I got that. Wait, oh. are you talking about me or the other guy? Other guy. <laughs> the the other, other guy. Me? No, not you. No, you no, Andrews sorry, are wait, fine. Time, time oh. out. I, I have three Andrews, oh, okay. okay? Hunter Andrew and Sullivan. Andrew Sullivan. Hey, I'm going to log out. I'll see you at 7.15. Take care, my, Mila. Thank you. No, not, sir, I'm sorry. Andrew Weaver is the person that should be logged out of this class and should be logged in for the next one. Oh. Okay, Andrew, you got, Andrew Melick, you're not in this class. Wait, what? I have a question. You're not in the lab. Oh, I know, I'm not in the lab. I'm in this class, right? Yes, you're in this class. You are not yeah, yeah. in the lab. Yeah, I know, I know, sorry. Okay, no problem. Question. Somebody quickly had a question, right? Yeah, that was me. Um, <clears throat> excluding the quiz one and, um, the homework uh, about this, What what's due after that? Okay, what you have to, the only other thing you have to do this week is to, is the scavenger hunt on the discussion. Okay, I got that done. What, uh, all right. Is there any way I can see due dates into the future so I can just get started on stuff? Go to the schedule. Okay. Hunter, go to the schedule. The, the uh, <laughs> schedule that is underneath the syllabus has all the due dates on it. Okay, hey, Professor. Dave. Hey, I'm sorry. Um, I know I'm going to have an issue. So the scavenger hunt, that's, is that due today? Or, cause no, I it's due on Sunday. Sunday, okay. Sunday okay, at awesome. 5. I believe it's Sunday at 5 or Sunday midnight. One of those two times. All you got to do is look at the scavenger hunt, and it should be able to tell you. Okay? Okay. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. Good enough. Professor. Professor, I couldn't be in your seven o'clock class for lab, so I've picked somebody else's lab. Is that all okay. right? Absolutely. Actually, it's it's more to your benefit, Rosina, because you get a different perspective. Okay. Maybe okay. I'm not going to be able to. To be honest with you, maybe I'm not going to be able to teach you measurement, how to see the lines, and see how to do that estimate. Maybe it doesn't work for you the way I teach it. The other person may be able to give you a different perspective and you get it. Okay. Thank you so much. No right. problem. Omar. Yes. Uh, so is that going to be our first assignment for the class? Your first assignment for the class was the quiz that you should have taken last night. Quiz one, Omar. I'm so sorry. I, I'm taking five classes. So I had a lot of things. So I okay, got I, I understand Omar, but also, I've given you an announcement. I announced the quiz. I, I gave you an email, and I told you about it on Tuesday, OK? So I'm sorry, Omar. That's going to be one of the ones you drop. Oh, so I can't take it anymore? No. The, Omar, the answers are published. The answers are published already. Gaith, do you have a question? No, no, I, I don't have a question. Um, I'm gonna okay. go ahead and log into the to the other. Uh, you can't log uh, in. I've, I've got to get the invitation. It'll oh, be oh, right okay. around. It'll be around seven fifteen. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, guys. I got to get out of here. All right. Anybody have any emergency? Any emergencies? Uh, professor, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, how how soon do you put up the recorded uh, class? Since I missed most of it, uh, I'm sorry for that. Christina, I. It's going to depend. First of all, it takes about a half an hour to convert it. Okay. All right. Then, well, I've read all the material. I'm pretty, I'm good to go, but I just wanted to kind of go through the lecture no, as no, well. I, but. I, I get it up there. Tomorrow I have, I'm going to end the lab probably about 8.30. I'll be honest with you. I've had three classes today. I'm not going to do anything oh. with this tomorrow. Oh, I get or it. Tonight. Tomorrow I go directly to Hillsborough and I'm there from 9 nine o'clock through i'm supposed to be there till three but i probably won't be i probably will work on uploading this tomorrow afternoon okay perfect thank not you as long as i can do it before guaranteed. next class good to go not as long guaranteed. as it's before next wednesday that's awesome okay thank you so much i appreciate your patience with me too no today problem. thank you no problem okay guys anything else
Sorry, I'm rushing you out of here, but I got to get this ended so I can get the next get this converted before the next class. So I will see you guys next Tuesday.